Hey peeps, Tyler here with my weekly wrap up. My pronouns are they, them, and or he, him. Timestamps and books mentioned will be in the description. For what I read, I read The Ghost Next Door by R.L. Stein. Trigger Warning Fire. If I had known how big a trigger warning that would be, I might not have read it, but that would have been a shame. But I was in a house fire years ago, back in 2012. I was in it, I was asleep during the day, and I woke up trapped. I was home alone. My neighbor saved me. Because after calling 911, the phone got cut off because of the fire. Again, middle of nowhere. There was no cell phone service, so you had to have a landline. And then I went to the window because I couldn't breathe. And when I opened it, of course, like I said, it was, it was in the afternoon. So the neighbors were all looking up. And then my neighbor ended up getting a ladder and saving me. Right after we got out, fire shot out the window. And because it was the middle of the no nowhere, the fire people weren't there yet. So. So because of that, that was very traumatic. And you know, PTSD. So if I had known that it was going to be a huge trigger in this book, I might not have read it. But like I said, that would have been a shame because I did end up loving it. Which says a lot. And that fire also lost everything I owned. And some kittens. And PTSD is an asshole. I guess I forgot about the initial scene. Because the initial scene kind of tells you what's going to happen later. Or I might have seen it coming. I did see some of the twist coming. Which was very predictable. But there was still more to it that I didn't see coming. This is so well written and plotted. And it's a Goosebumps books, book, so that's kind of surprising. I do like Goosebumps, obviously. But for Goosebumps, this is extremely good, in my opinion. If that makes sense. There's depth to the characters, there's foreshadowing, there's emotion. Also, I am disabled, and I always have been. And there is some talk of disability. There's, it's not a major part in it, though it does matter to it. And having been in a house fire, these two things make it mean a lot when I say this book gets all the stars from me. Because I've hated books because of how they dealt with disability or characters that were in just in a traumatic fire situation. I've read a couple books with characters in a traumatic fire situation and hated them because it's like what the fuck with the way they dealt with it all and then of course you know ableism with the whole disability thing so it means a lot when I say I loved this book before today I think I could say I'd never cried at a Goosebumps book before I cannot say that anymore the ending of this book had me sobbing Hannah's neighborhood has gotten a little weird ever since that new boy moved in next door. But when did he move in? Wasn't the house empty when Hannah went to sleep the night before? Why does it still look so deserted? Hannah can't get answers from her new neighbor. He just keeps disappearing in the oddest ways. And he's so pale. Is Hannah being haunted by the ghost next door? Obviously, it's short, so I don't want to give away too much. But... I loved this, if it's not obvious. Already, I gave it five stars. It is definitely one of my favorite Goosebumps books, if not my favorite now. <gasps> Though I still haven't read them all. Which is something I'm working on. Then I also read It's Jeff, Infinity Comic, number 1 to 12, by Kelly Thompson. I know nothing about the superhero universe, and I think this is Marvel or something. I don't know. But it's about a land shark, a cute, tiny little land shark in the shark's adventures or whatever. There's no words, but it, the story's told in pictures and it's adorable. So I gave it five stars. It's just cuteness overload. Then I read Be Careful What You Wish For by R. L. Stein. I liked it. I didn't love it. It's predictable, of course. I mean, the whole, be careful what you wish for, 
It's just things are generally pretty predictable. And frustrating in the second half when I was like, please stop adding things to your wishes that you think are safe. It is never safe. Please think a little more first. Like, I know she was 12. It was just still frustrating. <laughs> and I highly doubt the crystal woman actually wanted to repay the kindness, like she kept saying. The ending does have me wondering what happened next, though. It wasn't scary, but it was a bit thrilling, though, to see what would go wrong next. So I gave it three stars. Like I said, I did like it. Then I read... Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. When Jerry finds a dusty old piano in the attic of his new house, his parents offer to pay for lessons. At first, taking piano seems like a cool idea, but there's something creepy about Jerry's piano teacher, Dr. Shriek. Something really creepy, something Jerry can't quite put his finger on. Then Jerry hears the stories, terrifying stories, about the students at Dr. Shriek's music school. Students who went in for a lesson and never came out. This was fun, and it was actually familiar to me. I didn't remember what happened, but I'm like, this is very familiar. So I think this is one of the books I must have gotten my grubby child hands on when I was a kid at a Scholastic Book Fair. Because even though there's a bunch of Goosebumps books that I still haven't read yet, when I was a kid I did get my hands on whatever I could and read them. This must have been one of them. I don't have much to say on it though. I mean... It was just fun. The cover actually gives a lot away, so there's that. I gave it three and a half stars. And then I read BBC Wildlife Magazine. With articles by many different people, I do like that some are people of color in this issue had a non-binary person using they them pronouns. Of course I'll show you pictures and tell you about everybody for you that does the article, so that's nice to see. I give it five stars. I like nature and animals. <coughs> and I also read BBC Science Focus magazine. It's a science magazine. It's fascinating. It's scary at times. Because science and the world and shit. Both magazines are on Kindle Unlimited, so that's how I read them. I gave this one four stars. For what I'm currently reading, nothing at the moment. I'm sure that'll change shortly, I just haven't managed to pick up another book yet. For what I bought, I got Althea by Abigail McDaniels. You've taken possession of her house, now she'll take possession of you. Althea, newly divorced Carol Lawson, has gained something besides her precious freedom. She's inherited a rambling old house in the mist-shrouded swamplands of Louisiana, but there's something creepy about her new home. Carol can't shake the feeling that someone or something lives with her and her two daughters within its lightless depths. She's a living doll. Eight-year-old Holly thinks so too, especially when she finds Althea, a beautiful antique doll with the softest skin Holly has ever touched. And she looks so real, Holly can feel her eyes following her everywhere she goes. Holly and her mother and sister are about to discover that Althea can do other things too, things besides walk and talk, it's because something lives inside Althea, something ageless and vengeful. So that seemed interesting. And then I also got this manga, The Girl I Want Is So Handsome. It's a complete collection. Yuri manga. And House of Illusions by Ruby Jean Jensen. I've read The Haunting and Annabelle. 
by Ruby Jean Jensen. I really enjoyed both of them. So and I have other books by her as well that I haven't read yet. This has something to do with a carnival, which I know there's the Slime and Slashers Carnival Readathon. So I don't know if I'll read it in February or not, but we'll see. It depends on what I manage to get to. I also got The Witching Hour by Anne Rice on Kindle. And then audiobooks. I got The Lives of Dwarves, Their Journey from Public Curiosity Toward Social Liberation by Betty M. Adelson and The History of Ancient Egypt by Bob Breyer. Then I watched two movies. I watched The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. I had watched it before, so it was actually a rewatch, but I'm hoping to not take too long to get through the series at this point. So, because it had been a while, I rewatched it. I don't have anything to really say about the first one. I did enjoy it. So, like I said, I rewatched it so I can hopefully watch the rest of them. And then I watched The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 from 1986, which I did think was even better than the first one. I don't know what to think about the fact that I enjoyed this movie. It's the craziest shit I have ever seen, I think. There's more to it, though, than that, which was interesting, but it was still batshit crazy and gory. I don't know what it says about me that I liked it, but I gave it four and a half stars. So. And I know I'm so far from caught up in the series. So. And that is it for this week. What have you read or watched or bought? And. Yeah. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to. No pressure. Thank you for watching. My social media is in the description. And have a nice day.